Right now we have a guest, Susie Favor Hamilton. Let me background you on her. She won more NCAA titles than any woman ever. She was a terrific middle distance runner. She won seven United States championships between 1991 and 2004. Susie's about to turn 48 years old. She was one of the really fine, fine middle distance runners in American history, competing in the 92 and 96 and 2000 Olympics. She has written a book entitled Fast Girl. But do not think that this is some nice autobiography of a person who used to run fast and is going to give you loads of life advice. This is not that book. On the Bob Steak and Chop House Hotline, good morning to Susie Favor Hamilton. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to just set this up. My partner Donovan and I are going to set this up and let then let you pick up the story at a certain point, and after okay. that we'll have questions for you. Okay. Because this is a different story. It's a bit um, crazy, I admit. Yeah. Yeah. Susie's career, uh, successful career, trickled into the early 2000s. She she had a baby uh, in is it was it 2000? Is that correct? Um, 2005, 2000 2005. Was yeah. Uh, and and it is there that life starts to become strange for a person who was incredibly successful as a runner, had a speaking career was was very sought as a popular young lady and that's where i want to pick it up with you when did it may have been before the baby but when did you start to suspect something may have been wrong with Susie favor you know um i, I guess the point where it started 2000 olympics in sydney um i was dealing with enormous pressure and anxiety i ended up falling on purpose in that race so i wouldn't have to deal with being a failure i was just going to have this excuse um that was the start of the downfall for me Uh, fast forward five years i'm retired i have my baby best day of my life Um, but something happens quite quickly after having her Um, i'm diagnosed for depression and I've had suicidal thoughts. Um, the the drug they give me, Zoloft, starts to work magically. So within two months, I'm feeling so much better. I'm on top of the world. I I have no inhibitions. I'm I'm ready to tackle anything. And what happened was now two months on the drug. My husband and I are are struggling because of my depression. Depression is very hard on loved ones. Um, and so what we decide to do is something crazy. Let's, it's our 20th wedding anniversary. Let's go to Vegas. Let's jump out of an airplane. First of all, something I could never have done in my life, but I, this drug is making me lose every inhibition. So jumping out of the plane was exhilarating. I loved it. The next thing we had planned that night was we were going to have a threesome, something we had talked about in our life, but more of a fantasy. Was it really going to happen? Um, but it happened, and I was so gung-ho. Um, after the experience, I something changed in me, and what happened was I didn't know it at the time, but I was in a manic moment, meaning um, – I was on top of the world. I was exhilarated. I was like sparkly, I guess is the best way to describe it. I felt so alive. Um, Now, some people may go, oh, my God, she had a threesome. But let me tell you, many, many people do this. It's just something that isn't talked about. So in my case, I was going to be one of those people. It was our little secret. But after that, my husband and I decided, let's just try an open relationship and see how that goes. Because, again, we weren't getting along too well. Our job was tearing us apart because we were selling real estate together. So I'm the one who starts exploring. From the threesome, it's about a six-month sexual exploration. And after that point, I, I kept having to take things up another level. I was getting involved in very risky behavior, 
But at the time, I didn't see that at all. I didn't see how this behavior might be affecting my loved ones, my husband. I I didn't see any of that. I lost the concept of being a mother and a wife. Very bizarre. But this drug brought on hypersexuality, which is one of the symptoms in bipolar. Again, they didn't know I was bipolar. They gave me the wrong drug that set me off into a manic state. So here I am, delusional, going basically crazy. And I tell my husband, I just want to try it once. I've tried all these things. Let me try being an escort. And it's not as simple as I make it. There were things that were leading up to this. Um, So I try it. And I was on fire at this point. I'm like, this is amazing. Meaning I was intoxicated by the money, the lifestyle. I was like a movie star. And again, I saw nothing wrong with what I was doing. And to clarify it, for me, this was a really bad path. For other women, it's their choice what they want to do with their body. But after this um, crazy escorting, the one time turns into a year. And I'm, I'm sucked in. There's no way I can get out. And my husband tries, and he just can't. There's no reasoning with me. And basically, after the year, um, a client feels rejected by me because I saw him twice, and I couldn't see him the third time. So he's angry, and he calls a sports tabloid called The Smoking Gun. This mm. guy from the, the Smoking Gun from the East Coast finds me in Vegas. He flies out just to find me, approaches me, and basically says, I'm going to ruin your life. I know your secret, because here I am living a double life. When he told me, I didn't really, it didn't really occur to me that this was really happening. I felt so in in this um nothing could touch me i was indispensable mean or just i felt like i owned the world i was on top of the world it's almost like you feel so great like you're you're like a movie star you just feel on top of the world and after um about a week later I tried to pay him off. I had a client that wanted to pay him off whatever amount he wanted, and he wouldn't take it. And at that point is when it really started to sink in, uh, when the story came out that I had screwed up everybody who was close to me. I had screwed up their lives, not uh, not only me, but it had this effect on everybody um, that had loved me. Susie, uh, uh, this is Susie Favor Hamilton about... Her her incredible story of turning from um, middle distance running star to mother to to problems with mental illness being just misdiagnosed and then turning into a a Vegas escort, a prostitute. I want to I want to just point out a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Um, This is not something that your family would not know about. Your brother was bipolar and committed suicide? Yes, he died by suicide the year before the 2000 Olympics. Very devastating. Um, Had a huge effect, yeah, on tearing my family apart. Susie, I want to go back to the race, if you don't mind me uh, doing Mm -hmm. that in 2000. I know it's it seems like a well thought out plan for you to fall on purpose, but that had to be at, at a instant a moment's notice when you realize you realize that you're not going to meddle you worked your whole life for this and it's not going to go down uh what made you come out and tell the truth because i think that's also a secret that you probably could have kept uh with you forever right great question and i felt i was doing my public speaking and i was saying how great life was i i felt like a fraud And in one of my speeches, it just kind of came out. It even came out before I had told my husband. And, you know, at the time, I couldn't believe I said it. But it also felt freeing, like, okay, I let this secret out. And people are okay with it. They're responding in a way I'm being accepted by it. And 
So that made me want to talk about it more and more. And then other athletes started reaching out to me saying, I did the same thing in a race. I I fell on purpose. I I never wanted to tell anybody. Or people, I faked an injury that I really didn't have. So I just felt okay by telling it. I guess because you're accepted by society, then it's okay to tell it is kind of what my thinking was. Susie, has your husband stood by you through this whole thing? You know what? He is no doubt the hero of my story. And I truly believe we can save relationships, we can save marriages by, I'm not saying everybody um, has a mental illness, but I'm just saying in my case, he focused on the disease. He didn't focus on the behavior. It wasn't, obviously, the behavior we had agreed that we were going to have an open relationship, but I took it out of control. I kept taking it to the next level, and he he told me, you're going to ruin our life. You need to stop doing this. This is completely wrong. You're a mother. You're a wife. I lost all concept of that, and that's the scary part of bipolar and the mania that goes along with bipolar. You you don't think of any consequences. You think you're invincible. So yeah. So the 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 illness is so destructive. But if people just focus on the disease, not the be- crazy behaviors that come with bipolar, that's where we can save lives because it's showing compassion. It's it's we don't need to judge people. Um, and maybe maybe that person does have a mental illness. And that should be addressed because if you if you don't support, that's when lives are taken because that person feels shame. And I totally believe that shame kills people. While this is going on, can you see, Susie, the wheels falling off or the lug nuts being loose and the cars going all over the place? And it is is it just the excitement and the money that you don't care about getting everything together or with the illness? Do you basically not know what's going on so you're just kind of living in the moment yeah you're you're living in that moment and you don't see any of the consequences it was only till i was outed but but what is scary about um what i was doing is i had to keep taking it to the next level and i mean there was some crazy things happened to me um that I can't believe I even did. And I don't have a memory of a lot of the things also. If you describe crazy things, do you have a memory of one or two? I mean, how bizarre did it get? It, it You know, in my book, I, I talk about the behaviors. And I'm pretty, uh, you know, not completely descriptive, but I do talk about um, an, an incident where, you know, early on in my escorting, um, I had five clients at the same time, which didn't didn't seem odd to me at all. It seemed completely mm. normal. This is incredible. Um, I didn't feel I was ever in danger. Where in looking back, no matter who that person is, anybody can snap at any mm. time. But but it's amazing how there's such a double standard um, with all of this in that when my story came out, I was labeled the whore, the slut. Um, I should just go out and kill myself like my brother did. I had comments like that. Um, yet the, the man is looked at. There's no word for a man like that. Um, but they love to slut shame the woman. And... Um, <clears throat> This was, again, more shame that was going to make me take my life. Susie. Yeah, go ahead. We we know, Donnie and I have friends. We know NFL players. We know other athletes who are bipolar. It can be such an an incredible, incredible disease. Uh, Are you you now comfortable with the fact that you're going to have to live your whole life here, that that Susie Favor Hamilton's never truly going to be fixed, that she's going to have to live on this edge with this disease her whole life? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm not ashamed of having this illness at all. You know, my behaviors came from this illness. And, and I've, I've come to understand that, yes, I'll live with this for the rest of my life, um, this illness, 
And as long as I keep the triggers out of my life, as long as I have great medication, good doctors, the loved ones in my life supporting me, because ultimately I have everything, meaning I have my husband and my daughter. What else do I need in life? So I, I feel so lucky to be able to say I have everything. Um, it's not about the house or the car or the material stuff. It's about them. And um, God, it's so refreshing. There's you know, less judgment placed on me now that I'm speaking out and helping others. I get so many letters every day and emails from people saying they're living my life. Maybe they're not taking it to be an escort, but actually some of them are. Um, escorts writing me saying I'm the same, the same thing has happened to me. So I definitely know I'm making a difference and um, I'm not ashamed because if I was ashamed, I would never come to the point I am now. And that's the message of my whole story is can we find more compassion in this world? Can we have these trolls who are hiding behind their computers writing negative stuff can we somehow avoid their comments? Because their comments have no right in our heads. And I'm sure as radio hosts, you guys get the trolls saying stuff about you. Am I right? Uh, yes, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you okay. so much for joining us. Susie Favor Hamilton, the book is called Fast Girl. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your story and uh, have a great day. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. That's Susie Favor Hamilton. Go pick up the book, Fast Girl. Very interesting story, Norm. That is, that's nuts. That's something that you wouldn't even think about happening. Donnie, And she lived that whole thing, man. You listen to that story, and I don't know about you, but you know who I thought of during her story? Who was that? Charles, Charles Haley. Yeah? Charles Haley went nuts for years. Right. I hate to say that about a really good friend. Charles Haley was crazy for years because he wasn't properly diagnosed as bipolar. Mm. And and he just, you say, what are you doing, Charles? What are you doing? Right. But, boy, it takes it takes guts to share that story, man. That is that is going full throttle and living it on the edge. And to share your story to help other people, Jeez. is uh, that takes some courage. That's, that's crazy. Wow. YouTube.com slash Sports Greek.